Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Robins Roundup. I'm Sean Watts. And I'm George Smith. This week we're joined by the sports editor at Gloucestershire Live, John Palmer, and we're going to be talking about a variety of things, including the crowdfunder campaign, all things FA Cup, as well as Harry Pell taking on the most likely two game, Sam Law, the academy press officer, will be talking about the under-18s, and finally we'll talk about the Checker Trade trophy, and we'll look ahead to this weekend's game at Hartlepool. Well, John couldn't make it into the studio today, but he joins us by phone. Hi, John. How are you? Hi, Sean. Very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Um, let's start off by talking about the crowdfunder. Um, it's made a good start. What's your opinion from an external point of view? Well, I was pretty confident it would be well received, but I've, I've been amazed by the response, really. You know, I've, I've, it's been beyond all expectations. I think, um, obviously, Murray Toms is an expert in that area. Um, with his advice... I think a lot of people at the club have taken it all and put a massive effort into it. Um, and it's the, the, the figure that, that's been reached already, um, only three or four days in, um, it's incredible, really. So I think everyone's it's created a real good buzz around the place. Everyone seems to be loving it. Every, everyone's really positive about it. And, um, you know, I, I can't see it failing. I think it's going to go from strength to strength now, right up the way, right up to the target. That was going to be my next question. You, you think we're going to definitely get to the target, do you? Yeah, when I, when I first saw it, I mean, I Murray knows what he's doing. He's he's an experienced guy in this sort of thing, and but it is a lot of money. Um, you know, when you think that Cheltenham's record transfer fee is fifty thousand pounds, it's no small matter for for a club of Cheltenham size. So I did think, you know, this is going to be a big ask. But I think the way that it started, and the way people are getting behind it, and the things that I think could potentially still be done, I think it will be um, a massive success. I think the scoreboards will happen as a result of this crowdfunding effort. OK, well, we're going to be checking back with George in a little bit. But first, here's John Finnegan's thoughts on how it's going so far. So, Finnegan, um, what a start to the campaign. Unbelievable start. Uh, when we started out, you know, on Monday, we, we really didn't know how it would take off. Um, the support's been unbelievable. Um, really good start. 26,000 in, in the first three, four days is, well, it's beyond our wildest dreams, really. But we really need to keep it going. Um, and hopefully people will keep supporting it in the, in the weeks ahead. We've had a few uh, anonymous donations of quite large sums, and the fans have been brilliant as well, buying up all the rewards. Um, I guess one of your big hope is to get some commercial sponsors involved. Definitely. There's, there's lots of opportunities to advertise on the scoreboard. We want to pre-sell that advertising, and that will really help us get to our target. Um, so if there's any businesses out there that want to get involved with this project and, and receive a bit of... Um, good publicity from it in the, in the local community. Um, it's a great opportunity now and uh, we are pre-selling the main sponsorship of the board and also lots of different sections that are available on it as well. Are you surprised? Obviously the, the, the figure raised is amazing but the number of backers as well is, is well over 200 now. Are you surprised that so many people have got involved? I really am because like I said earlier I, I wasn't sure how it would go. We were always positive. We always, you know, we really wanted this to happen um, but you can never quite gauge how, how it's going to be received but it's been... Like I say, it's, it's blown everyone's mind, really, the support and the amount of backers that we've had. Uh, the guys at Crowdfunder, I think, are quite surprised as well, so uh, it, it proves that we're doing something right. And just finally, um, for people listening to this who may maybe not have uh, taken part so far, how, how can they get involved? They can get involved by visiting the page, um, www.crowdfunder.co.uk forward slash scoreboard, or they can give me a call at the club on 01242 588 107. Well, thanks for that, Finners. George, you must be really pleased with how it's all going. Definitely. Um, the response has been incredible. Uh, we're very nearly halfway there, and we've still got sort of three and a half weeks to go. So fingers crossed if everyone can keep working together, we'll get there. And what sort of things have people got to look forward to in the next few weeks? Well, down the right-hand side of our crowdfunder page, there's all of the rewards currently there. Uh, we've got some really, really exciting things coming up. Um, so keep checking the page. Keep looking. Um, the Legends match is almost sold out now. Uh, I'll be there. I'm ready to play. Uh, I'll be doing a Boris Johnson tackle on John Finnegan, so uh, <laughs> looking forward to it. Well, let's talk about crew. Under the circumstances, I suppose getting a draw and taking it to a replay was, was quite a good result, really, wasn't it? Yeah, it's always difficult when you have to pay for that long with 10 men. And um, funnily enough, it wasn't really till the last, I'd say, 20 minutes or so, maybe 25 minutes, that crew actually looked like they had an extra man. Um, I thought Cheltenham handled it really well and obviously scored and didn't really look like they were struggling until I think it probably they probably did tire a little bit towards the end and it was a tremendous defensive effort um, from Downsy and the boys in the second half so it was I, I think with 10 men for that long um, Gary Johnson said 
he was happy still to be in the cup. And the fact that they came from behind, um, the crew manager, Steve Davis, also said he was happy still to be in the cup. So I think it's one of those rare occasions where both managers actually went home quite happy, I think. Sutton United away awaits the winner of the replay on Tuesday. Um, it's quite an incentivising draw, really, isn't it? Yes, yeah, as soon as the draw came out, my mind went to Ryan Burge, who's um, Cheltenham-born. He's nearly signed for Cheltenham a couple of times. And so there's a lot of interest with him being a Cheltenham lad. But I think, you know, in terms of just Cheltenham Town getting through, um, a National League club away is obviously not easy. You'd rather be at home. But I think it could have been a lot harder. Certainly are in their first season in the National League haven't been promoted from National South and um, they've not made a bad start but you have to say if Cheltenham get through a crew they, they should be very confident of beating Sutton but Sutton have caused a couple of upsets over the years and um, I'm sure they'll be up for, out to try and do it again but I think it was a, a pretty interesting draw it's a ground that Cheltenham haven't been to for a long long time um, artificial pitch um, it makes it a bit different and uh, it happened to Waterlooville last season Cheltenham went there and, and that's a bring them back to Wadden Road before they went through so we know of clubs of that level and you know haven't were in the same league as certain last year it won't be easy For the replay itself on Tuesday are you feeling confident? Well I think with 11 men <laughs> if, if <laughs> Chelsea can keep 11 men on the pitch which they have done for the vast majority of um, Gary Johnson's reign it's, you know, discipline has been very good on the whole then I think Cheltenham have a little bit of a psychological advantage because they've they've nearly beaten crew with 10 men um, and I think Cheltenham, the way Cheltenham are playing at the moment they, they beat Crew at home in the league and Cheltenham are playing a lot better than they were around that sort of time so with the, with the, the feel good factor from the Bolton result and just the general unbeaten run that Cheltenham are on I, I think you know, obviously we don't know how it's going to go at Hartlepool at the moment but I think Cheltenham will go up there in, in good frame of mind and um, do all they can to get through I just I think Cheltenham will be confident of giving most teams a game at the, mo- uh, a game at the moment the way they're playing Well now it's back to John Finnegan who's just going to give us another commercial update so Finn, is away from the crowdfunding, how's everything? How, how is everything else going commercially? Yeah, it's, it's been really good. We've had a lot of support. Um, we had a good full house up against um, Bolton in hospitality. Uh, really good crowd in there, really enjoyed the game um, last week. Um, we're full up again against Portsmouth uh, on the 19th. And, um, but we still have got a few match and match ball uh, sponsorship opportunities coming up. So um, please give me a ring or, a, or an email to see what's available on that. So you can contact me um, on 01242 588 107 or email me john.finnegan at ctfc.com um, just to, to find out what's available um, in terms of match, match and match ball sponsorship. Um, and we've got plenty of pre-match dining packages available as well. Um, it's a great time to get involved because the team's doing so well on a good run. So, um, you know, hopefully you can come along and have a good night, good food, good company and, and watch a winning team as well. Well, this week it was the turn of Harry Pell to take on the most likely two game and here's how we got on. So, Pelly, do you know the most likely two game? You heard it before? Yeah. Okay, right. <clears throat> In the spirit of this week, which Chatham Town player is most likely to become US president? Daniel Parslow. Okay. Lose their head in a training session? Jack Munns. Lose in a quiz. Robbie. Win a table tennis tournament. Me or Rob Dickey. Become a football manager. Definitely Aaron Downs. Tell a terrible joke. Cole Storer. Get sent off in a match. (laughs) Uh, Cole Storer. (laughs) Get engaged next. Jack Munns. He pretends he's not loved up, but really I think he's had other reels. Pull a prank on a teammate. Definitely me or us. Just quickly, we done Munzee's car, egged it, flowered it, done the job. <laughs> when did you do that? Uh, the other week. He doesn't quite know that it's us, so when he hears this, he's going to know that we went out of our way to go and do over his car. Are you going to tell us who your other conspirators were? Yeah, me and Russell Griffiths. <laughs> <laughs> Turn up late to training. Uh, Kobe Arthur. Who's the most likely to cry at a sad movie? Billy Waters. Who's the most likely to appear on Jeremy Kyle? Um, I'll go Kyle Storer again. OK, thanks very much, buddy. Well, a bit of a confession there from the ever-so-mischievous Harry Pell. Sorry if you're listening, Munzee. Let's swiftly move on, because I'm joined by the Academy Press Officer, Sam Law. Um, Sam, how's the season progressing? Um, it started well, Sean. It started really well. We had a good um, couple of wins. 
Uh, but since we've had, you know, we've been knocked out of the FA Youth Cup recently by Plymouth. Um, and we've had four straight defeats, I think. But I think um, we go away to Bristol Rovers on Saturday, who are second in the league. Um, and if Ash can, you know, rally his boys, I think we'll be all right and we can get something out of it. And what's the long-term academy goals? It's got to be trying to produce players into the first team. We've seen um, Josh Thomas on the on the bench a couple of times, as well as Jordan Lim. You know, that, that's got to be the ultimate aim, hasn't it? Well, yeah, I spoke to Ash a couple of weeks ago and he said... Um, even if they're not winning games, they're still trying to produce talent that can go on to play for the first team. I mean, you look at Luke Thomas, who went to Derby a couple of seasons ago, and I think that's the aim that they've got for you know, the long-term future. Absolutely. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Sam. Thank you. On Thursday, we had the draw for the Checker Trade Trophy round of 32. We were drawn against Leicester City under-21s and will be taking them on at the LCRL Stadium. Due to Leicester's involvement in the Champions League and Youth European League, we don't know exactly when the match will be played, but we'll have a statement for you as soon as we can. Are you are you happy with the draw? Do you think we stand a good chance of going through? Yeah, I, I, my opinion, it's it started off as an absolute joke at Blackpool. And now, now the competition <laughs> is starting to sort of mean something now because Cheltenham had a good result against Everton and the, some really good ideas and things that have been done at the club actually got a half-decent crowd in, which you know you can't say was the case at Blackpool where there was virtually no one there. So to have two crowds of over a 1,000 now, um, and we've got through a tough group, a northern group, having to go to Blackpool and then play Everton, bottom the home. Suddenly it now becomes a bit of a competition that the Cheltenham will want to do well in and get the, the £20,000, I think it is, that's up for grabs in the next round. So Leicester City, you couldn't have had a bigger name in terms of the fact they're Premier League champions to have some of their young players come into uh, Wadden Road. We saw how good some of their young players were last year when they um, not Cheltenham out of the FA Youth Cup up at the King Power. So we know how good they're going to be. Um, the kids of, of Leicester but it's an interesting draw I'd, I'd much rather have that have, have had Leicester at home than the other there was two or three other options I think Leicester was probably the most interesting one and now I think it's it could catch, catch the imagination a little bit now this competition Well um, let's just finally move on to um, this coming Saturday's game against Hartlepool um, it's a long old trip and we don't really want that to affect the performance because we're in some good form aren't we? Yeah the Hartlepool is, it's always a one of the longest trips of any season and Cheltenham have obviously had some bad memories in recent times and lost their last football league game there and also uh, went out of the cup their last season but this this is a completely different kettle of fish now with Cheltenham playing well and then they're obviously on level pegging with Hartlepool um, I, I think it's going to be uh, bring back some of the good old memories when Cheltenham have had good results there in the past and they've played playoff semi-finals there they've had some really good league wins there so let's say we're, we're smiling rather than the last couple of years it's been a bit of a long trip for nothing John, speaking of memories, what were your memories of last year? Obviously, you went up there, and uh, for me personally, it was a pretty disappointing day. Yeah, it, it, I don't remember a massive amount about the game, but I remember thinking that Cheltenham were unlucky to lose the game. And um, it, it wasn't really like one of those games where you think, well, Hartley Poor are a league above and they look to class apart. It wasn't really one of those games. It was it was just a case of Cheltenham probably didn't take the chances they created. Uh, I remember Trevor Carsten having a good game in goal, the ex-Cheltenham goalkeeper who won't be playing this weekend. Um, and, it, and it was probably I think Gary was quite annoyed because it could have brought in some extra money and in the end you know Cheltenham got promoted that was the main thing so nobody really talks about it but the one thing Gary Johnson hasn't done at Cheltenham yet which I'm sure he's and he's done earlier on in his career is have a good FA Cup run so he'll be desperate to do that um, but and, and ban banish those memories of last season so hopefully he can do both in the next couple of weeks and uh, just one final question from me um, let's have a little score prediction from you then I think Cheltenham will win 2-1 on Saturday. I'm going I'm to say uh, confident team performance, warm up nicely for the cup replay with uh, another three points on the road. Cool. Well, thanks very much for joining us, John. Thanks, John. Cheers. Well, we're just about out of time now. Make sure you check out all of the Crowdfunder campaign videos on Robins TV, as well as Gary Johnson and James Dayton's pre-Hartlepool press calls. Safe journey up to the northeast, and we'll see you up there on Saturday.